So I had some time to kill recently, and I was on YouTube checking out a channel of a colleague, and there was such an interesting discussion going on over there, and that was about should we be teaching the OSI model anymore? I really couldn't even believe it was being discussed because I think we have to teach the OSI model for a whole bunch of important reasons. And I really do mean it when I say we have to teach it. But I'm getting ahead of myself, I guess. Why is the OSI model such a great thing? It was originally created for stuff to have a chance to be able to communicate. When networking and all of this amazing technology with compute really started taking fire in the 60s and 70s and 80s, one of the challenges in those decades was that you would have equipment from one manufacturer like IBM that couldn't communicate with like NEC or DEC. There was all these vendors that had great stuff, but it didn't interoperate. We needed interoperability so that we could have the incredible internet filled with its diverse systems that we have today. The reason the OSI model was created is one thing, that's kind of historical, but how can it help us today? Well, one of the ways it's going to help us today is in troubleshooting. When we break down the network around us into these layers and we recognize there's a problem at layer three, the network layer, so we number from the bottom up, layer one is the physical, layer two is data link, layer three is network, and layer four is transport, when we talk about there being a problem at layer three, we know that this is most likely causing the issue at layer four, layer five, layer six, layer seven, because those layers depend on the network layer. A fun, totally like in your face example of this would be if I unplug your laptop and there's no battery inside it. So I unplug your computer and it loses power. So you're not going to be able to get email. The physical layer is dead, and therefore so is layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, and the application layer, layer seven. Now, one of the first skills that you're going to need is just memorizing the layers, and there's two famous ways to do that. If you stay with the bottom up, also popular in pubs, by the way, bottoms up. If you stay at the physical and work up, it's please do not throw sausage pizza away. And that's the one I always liked because I'm Italian and I love sausage pizza. So please do not throw sausage pizza away. If you're a top-down person, it's all people seem to need data processing. When you've been in this industry for any amount of time, these are just ingrained inside you. What's happening is encapsulation of information. That's really what's happening. What, what we do is we are wanting to send data from one network device to another network device, and there's going to be a bunch of encapsulation that takes place and what this means is additional information that's going to be added to our data so that the communications actually works. Let me walk you through this with some examples. So here we can see the OSI model, often called the OSI stack, because of course we're stacking these layers on top of each other. And think about us transmitting information from one workstation to another workstation in an organization. And what they're communicating with is copper. The physical media is copper that is inside of Ethernet cables. So the physical layer consists of copper and the physical layer encapsulation involves chopping up our data into the appropriate bits for transmission onto the copper wire. Then what happens is we are about to send this over an Ethernet network. So at the next layer of the OSI model, the data link layer, we will encapsulate, and we don't do it, the machine does it for us, thank goodness. The computer will encapsulate onto our data 
information about our MAC address because the MAC address is the identifier of a workstation in an Ethernet network. So now that the MAC address has been appended to the data, it can be handled by the network layer. This is going to be responsible for taking what we call a packet and sending it on its way throughout the internet work, maybe even the internet, the global internet. Once again, addressing is needed here. So we had a layer two data link layer example of a MAC address and at the network layer with the TCP IP protocol, we have an IP address that would be appended or encapsulated is the best way to say it to our data. At the transport layer, we have options for how this data will be transported through the network. For example, if we use transmission control protocol, we'll be transporting the data reliably. If we use user datagram protocol, we'll be transporting it unreliably. I'll do videos on this for you to make sure you understand TCP and UDP fully. But for right now, we note that the TCP or UDP information would be encapsulated on our data. So the data is picking up little ingredients, picking up additional addressing parameters, picking up additional pieces of information so that we can successfully send it through the network. The next layer is the session layer. And an example would be the WAN protocol of X.25 or the secure copy protocol for securely transferring files through a network. The session layer does just what it sounds like. It is making sure that sessions, often secure sessions, can be established. The presentation layer is doing just what it sounds like ensuring that things are formatted in an understandable way by the next layer up, the application layer. So we might have ASCII for text or MIME for email messaging. And then there's the application layer, and it's going to be speaking the application layer protocols like the language of love for the internet. The World Wide Web is, of course, powered by the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP just like the world of email is handled by the simple mail transfer protocol or file transfers by the file transfer protocol. So notice there's additional information appended to our data for the application layer to consume. Each layer encapsulates additional information that's going to be required in our environment for proper communications. It's really a glorious invention and it wasn't all that unique. As a matter of fact, we're going to see in the next video how the Department of Defense here in the United States had actually created a model that gave rise to this OSI model years later. Now, before I wrap up this video, we also need to realize, and you heard me mentioning these, that we give specific names to the bottom four layers of the encapsulated data with whatever was encapsulated to it. At the physical layer, we say the data are just bits. At the data link layer, when we encapsulate, let's say the MAC address information, we call this a frame. At the network layer, we call the data and the encapsulated information a packet. And at the transport layer, layer four, we call it a segment. I've never heard mnemonic device that will help you memorize these, so I invented one. And I invented it decades ago, and I wrote it in a couple of my books, and it actually caught fire. And it's some people fear birthdays. And notice I use the top-down approach for segment, packet, frame, and bits. Some people fear birthdays. And you will really want to practice with that and practice thinking in those terms because when you are talking to networking cybersecurity analysts and specialists that are your peers they're going to be talking in terms of hey what did you find in the packet and they want you to know that they're talking about the IP network layer information 